additional fuel to help the body work. And so when he asked about, you know, the quality, you know, one of the things that I think we have not spent enough time on uh, emphasizing is the quality of the institutions and the quality of the principal investigators that have been associated with Juice Plus. Now, understand when we talk about independence, the way it works is most of these hospitals and research centers came to us because they're looking to do research and they're looking for people who are willing to fund research. So we work with them on the protocol, on the study design. The principal investigator then takes it and he has to go through and present it to his internal review board at the university or research hospital. We don't have anything to do with that because in the end, the institution and the principal investigators and other investigators on the study, they put their name on it, not just plus. It is the name of the institution, their reputation, the quality of their reputation and that of the investigator that's at stake here. So it's very important to understand. So they approve it for safety and for efficacy. The study is done, blood is gathered, subjects are tested, all that. The next time that we have the opportunity to get involved is when the abstract is actually written. So the whole study is done at this point. The only thing we can do is send in independent auditors, not us, independent auditors who go in from time to time and check on the institution to make sure that things are progressing as expected. So it's truly independent. And even when we get the abstract, the really about the only area where we have any influence is to make sure that they describe the product correctly. And if they do mention the company, that they mention the company correctly. The rest of it is out of our hands. So we put our product at risk because we know it's gonna work. And those institutions and those investigators put their reputation on the line for these publications. And, and you know, it goes through a peer review process where first it's presented at, a, at some scientific conference in front of you know, other world-renowned scientists and investigators, and they have the opportunity to criticize, to ask questions. The investigators gotta stand up there and, and answer. And then he or she has a chance to go back, look a little deeper, uh, look at things perhaps that they hadn't fully considered before they go from the abstract to the final paper. Then the then that gets presented to a journal. The journal has its own peer reviewed staff, which ask critical questions about how the work was done, uh, how the results are characterized, all of that. We're still out of it. You know, that's an independent process and that can take months and months. Once again, the principal investigator has to answer these questions before the journal will publish the paper. So, I mean, it's a very rigorous process that takes a lot of time and essentially all takes place without Juice Plus being involved. And, uh, you know, at the end, of course, we, we meet with the team and they tell us all about it. And that's, that's really exciting. But when you look back, you look at these institutions like MD Anderson, Vanderbilt, Yale, UCLA, King's College in London, Cambridge, Sydney University, Tokyo Women's. Now, these are some of the most respected universities and research hospitals in the world. You know, I looked at this, a website of one of these other companies that's telling our story one of these knockoffs and they said yeah we have independent tests yes sir yeah, those independent tests are simply lab tests that test for herbicides pesticides heavy metals things like that which is just the basics 
of GMP, which is good manufacturing processes. That, that, that's just a laboratory test that's proud of the manufacturing process. That's not independent research. Not at all. Doesn't even begin to compare. That's your lowest level of standard to be able to sell a product. Okay, but they're telling our story as if they have all of this independent research, which of course they don't and they won't. Uh, so we've got these fantastic institutions. And one thing I've proposed uh, to the company as Stuart has asked me to get a little, we have a lot of new marketing people that uh, you know are just getting up to speed on this amazing story. And she's asked me to interact with them, help where I can. And one of the things I've asked is I would like someone in the market department to do a research project on every single principal investigator of every study. And here's what you're gonna find out. You've got people like uh, Lovell Jones, who did the study at MD Anderson, one of six doctors in the country that collaborated on the famous well diet, which is women healthy eating and living and is still the most successful post breast cancer lifestyle approach ever. And basically it's fruits and vegetables. He's one of six doctors in the country that put that protocol together. He's famous. You've got people like Alan Goldfarb who pumped from University of North Carolina, Greensboro. When he published the study on Juice Plus Exercise Physiology, he was the president of the American Society of Exercise Physiology and Nutrition in Exercise. He's world famous. You've got people like Ian Chappell who did the study uh, at Birmingham. He was president of the uh, Dental Medical Society in the UK and he actually writes textbooks that are used all over the world, including American dental schools. The guy's a legend. Uh, and when I talked to Ian Chappell, when the paper was first presented, you know, the, the results on uh, pocket depth and uh, gum health, you know, these were improvements like 10, 15%. And I thought, you know, it doesn't sound all that good. He said, are you kidding? He said, you don't understand. Our department, gives all of these patients a world-class periodontal treatment. It's the best available in the world. And then they, they come back six months later for their next treatment. He said, when you see that, kind, he was so excited. He said, when you see that kind of improvement in people who have had the best treatment possible compared to the people who didn't take Juice Plus after the treatment, he said, this is unbelievable. You know, when you see the excitement in the eyes of the researcher, you know, then it has impact on you personally that, wow, okay, I get it. I'm excited too. We have people uh, like Samir Saman, who was uh, head of the uh, biochemistry department at the University of Sydney. At the time, the largest department in the largest university in all of Australia. You know, famous people. And then Manfred himself, who's now the director of our clinical research, has a double PhD and is president of the Society of Sports Nutrition in Austria. You know, so when you really dig down and dig in and look at what is behind this program, you know, it is world class. And it speaks so much about the quality of the Juice Plus product and the Juice Plus company that oh, it just, you know, just blows me away. And I'm going to talk about two, quickly about two studies, and then Wendy, you can ask me some more questions. <laughs> you don't have to ask me too many. Uh, if, so I'm talking to the new, uh, uh, the team, uh, the new marketing team, and I said, let me just tell you two studies, for example. Uh, one of them is uh, 
the study that was done in Newcastle, Australia, again, by a world-class principal investigator. And she was looking at the impact of Juice Plus on several healthy biomarkers, including chronic inflammation. And Juice Plus was performed extremely well on all of those tests. But then they went into the field of nutrigenomics. Now I can remember sitting at university, I mean at industry conferences and people talking about someday, you know, this new field of epigenetics, how lifestyle can improve your genes. We're all born with positive and negative potentials in our DNA. And it was long believed that we were victims of our DNA and that 90% of our life outcome would be the result of heredity and the other 10% may be lifestyle. Now it's completely flipped the other way around. And so the field of epigenetics was, is going to be looking at over the years how good lifestyle habits can turn on your positive genes and turn off negative genes, like switches on and off. Wow, interesting. And they said, and someday this subfield nutrigenomics will specifically look at how food choices do the same thing. Good food choices flip on the positive genes and flip off the negative genes. Well, the future is here, my friends, because Juice Plus, I, I'm sitting there in this conference and they're talking about what's going to happen someday while we were actually doing it. And what they found is that the Juice Plus product, after like eight weeks, positively flipped on over 1,100 positive genes and flipped off almost 500 negative genes. I mean, personally, that's all I need to ever need to know for me to take this product for the rest of my life. End of story. You know, this is, this is how, this is how healthy lifestyle happens. You know, this foundational choice is a start down the path of health and longevity. The other, the second study I want to mention is brand new. It's about, it, it was done in Murcia, Spain, and it's just come out on the effect of fruits and vegetables, et cetera, et cetera, on mental health and memory. And I'm, I'm gonna read from the abstract. They did, uh, for all the subjects, they did three different mental acuity tests. The Stroop test, the Tesson test, and the wrist test. And these are measurements of different cognitive function patterns. The results revealed statistically significant differences in all the variables of the test carried out. All the variables. It was a clean sweep, especially compared with placebo. Specifically, the results obtained in the Stroop and Tesson test, in addition to the processing speed, even when semantic interferences were markedly better after treatment with the product under study. Moreover, the consumption of the product under study, by the way, this was 16 weeks, one month crossover, and then 16 weeks. So both groups had the opportunity to have Juice Plus during the study and not have Juice Plus during the study. So these results are based on all the people while they're on Juice Plus compared to the very same people while they're not on Juice Plus. This is, this is the ultimate in study design. It's the, it's the gold of the gold. It's the platinum. Double blind placebo controlled crossover, okay? The consumption of the product clearly improves short-term memory, verbal and nonverbal. According to the results obtained in the risk test, the study showed an improvement in executive function in terms of short-term memory, working memory, selective and sustained attention and the speed of processing. Well, being that I'm almost 75 years old, thank you very much. <laughs> we loving it or what? And um, I was just gonna tell you 
We'll let God decide, Wendy. So I'm going to tell my story. I want you to, sweetheart. There's there was a number of reasons I retired. Part of it is all oh, my family lives out in the West, mostly in the mountains, and I needed to spend more time with them. And, uh, but also my father died of Alzheimer's. And I am an absolute clone of him. I, every morning I wake up and wash my face. And, oh my God, there he is. <laughs> it's, and we, we are so similar. We have the same baby tooth with no permanent tooth behind it in the very same spot in our mouth. We just, so I volunteered for uh, an Alzheimer's study with a new, for a new Novartis drug with a, a local uh, clinic with a, a very good neurologist. And she gave me this battery of tests. I went through six months of testing. And sure enough, the first thing you discover in order to get in the study is I have the gene. There's a, a gene called APOE, and there's three expressions of the gene. There's APOE2 and three and four. Two and three are benign with respect. You get one gene from your mother and one from your father. So each of us has two APOE genes. APOE4, if you have one, your risk for Alzheimer's goes up almost double. If you have two APOE4 genes, you're pretty much a lead pipe cinch to get it. And sure enough, I had, the, I had one of the APOE genes from my dad. And so I'm at high risk. So I do all these tests, you know, mental acuity, memory, over and over and over. Then uh, it's a CT scan. And the last thing is I had to go down to Denver for a PET scan with a radioactive isotope in my blood. And they'd look at your brain to see where you are with amyloid plaque because the advancement of amyloid plaque in your brain is a signal that uh, you are uh, very likely to get Alzheimer's. Well, when it was all said and done, um, the neurologist called me and <laughs> she said, I have good news and bad news. I said, well, what's the good news? She said, well, first of all, you have zero MDR, mental decline rating, zero. She said, you actually got 100% on, on one of these tests, which no one else has ever done before. The second thing is you have no amyloid plaque, no, no out of the ordinary amyloid plaque. She said, in my professional opinion, not only do you not have Alzheimer's, but you're never going to get it. I said, well, for heaven's sakes, what's the bad news? She says, well, the bad news is we're gonna miss you because we love talking about research when you come into the office. And so, because you can't be in the study, you know, you don't qualify. Uh, and so, you know, I thought back to, there was a doctor by the name of Vincent Fortunacci. Uh, he was a neurologist at USC. And he was in the Juice Plus business some years ago and his father died of Alzheimer's. And Vincent wrote a book called The Alzheimer's Cure. And of course there really isn't a cure, but it was basically a book on the best thing you could do to avoid it. And the best dietary intervention, the number one thing, uh, in, including exercise and social activity and all that, was eating berries, combination of berries. So you, you can imagine, I have doubled up on vineyard for 20 years. Now, I'm not saying that that's why I have the outcome at this moment that I do, but I'll guarantee you, uh, Juice Plus was part of my story and, and the vineyard in particularly, uh, because as soon as I heard that from Vince, boy, I was, I, I was convinced. And I throw berries in my Juice Plus shake in the morning. Uh, and it's just, I don't know. You know, we'll, I can't say for sure, <laughs> but my personal feeling is that it has made a difference.
in the out in my outcome. So anyway, Wendy, uh, that's an opener. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful that you're here. I'm so grateful that you're fine. I'm so grateful that that study probably put aside any fears that you were having. I'm grateful for the for our berry blend and the fact that you doubled up on it. And I'm going to start doubling up all the time on it now. Thank you so much. I tell um, you, Wendy, I honestly thought that I, that by now, Chris would be starting to take care of me. Yeah, I know. I talked with you back then. and I had this uh, fear. In fact, when I went to Memphis uh, not long ago, I was with Sean and, and uh, Sean Hopkins and other friends at the company now. And they looked at me and said, my gosh, you look five years young. You sound five years. What, have, what has happened? I think what has happened is that the burden of that fear right. is gone. Right. And I just feel so grateful, so happy to be alive and healthy. Uh, it, is, it has changed my life. Anyway, enough of that. You have changed all of our lives. So I'm so grateful that your life has gotten turned around with this knowledge. This is fantastic. And I didn't know all of that. So thank you, my darling. Um, when we were talking, you were saying the, the, some things that I really love that I hadn't heard before. Now we were talking about that brain function study, which is Gosh, a lot of people are believing that that could end up being the most important study that we've even done uh, to date. You know, the, the fact that it was over um, really, uh, what, four months and then a month and then another four months, right? Four weeks and, a, and then a couple of weeks crossover at four weeks. So the whole thing goes over like three months, three months long. That's a long study. All right, I'm going to double check that because I thought it was 16 weeks. Well, you're right. 16 and 16. Good right, math. 16, right. 16 with a month washout. Yes. Um, yes. And You're the right. fact that You're it's right. randomized, double blind, placebo controlled, and crossover. Yes. Um, and though, what six, I had not 16 heard the weeks speak of about. the 16 weeks in, on each side and a four week crossover. So that's right. a long time. Yeah, that's exactly. like eight, yeah, eight, nine months total. Nine months, right. Um, and the way that it's a platinum setup, right, for a research methodology. Okay. Yeah. And then, though, originally, like when, uh, uh, when we were reading the abstract, what they didn't mention was the fact that once the, the, the original group, there was a placebo and a trio, right? Um, and so yeah. the trio group had all these significant changes from all of those tests. Very fabulous, right? Then they have the washout. Then that trio group uh, not only had the month of washout without the trio, but then they went into the 16 weeks of no trio because they were now the placebo group, right? Right. And what was really significant was the fact that um, once they, they, they finished the whole thing and did more testing on everybody, the trio group that had had these amazing results went back down to baseline in cognitive functioning. And it was not written in the abstract or in the final right. paper. And I'm going, why did they not make such a big deal about that? Well, it's implied when you say that the active group compared to placebo was better in both cases, That's, that implies that the group that was once on the active and went to placebo was no longer as good compared to the group that was on placebo and went to active. It's just like the Graz study and the Cobras in Austria who were healthy while they were on Juice Plus and the flu bug went through the barrack. And then when they flip flop, those guys got sick and the guys that were sick before who went on Juice Plus got healthier. Same exact thing. Okay, but I am not a 
a doctor of the brain, I couldn't have figured that out. And when Dr. Mitra Ray did her talk, yeah. she didn't even mention it. And I am flippo Ooh. upset about that because to me, when I'm talking about this now, John, you can imagine, I say the crescendo is when you figure right. it out, right? You figure it out that those people that had great results on the trio, then they're without their juice plus, uh, trio for um, for uh, 16 weeks plus another month, right? So five months, they're without their trio. They go yes. down to baseline. I mean, it's exactly huge. Exactly. And you know, Wendy, part, part of the challenge that we've had uh, is that Dr. John Weiss, who was my mentor in reading research, understanding it and being able to read, John has passed away. Rick Du Bois has passed away. Uh, we, you know, I've re kind of retired. Yes, I've retired. Uh, we need, we need focus on new people within the company who can step up and fill these gaps. And Mitra is, I think, you know, going to be a big part of that. But we need more. And Manfred, well, trust me, Manfred is awesome. But he speaks, you know, he, he, he's in Austria and he speaks a little bit of accent and, and he's a really busy guy. But my advice is the company needs to learn, lean more on him to help train our speakers in what the real significance is, the story behind the story, which John Weiss always used to help me with. Manfred is okay. going to be a key. All right, but now remember, I told you this that you know when um, it was Dr. John Saran, you know Janet's unbelievably smart husband, that I listened to him go through the brain cognitive study, and he brought that point up about this amazing crescendo at the end. But then, like Mitra did not. Well, it wasn't Mitra's fault because. No. I called Sean Hopkins and I told him the story that I had heard Dr. Saran speaking and he got that, but I listened to Mitra and she didn't make that giant bringing it all together that you always did for us from the main stage as you described these new uh, research pieces coming out, right? And yeah. Sean kind of said, yeah, and he checked with Dr. Lamprecht. He didn't say, he wasn't going to say anything to me initially, but he came back just a, not very much longer. And he said, okay, I talked with Dr. Lamprecht and we are going to put that in our marketing materials, that crescendo piece. Okay, they are, but he had to get approval. See, and the reason why I finally asked Sean and it's because it almost seemed too sensational. Well, I'm tired of making us seem small to make everybody else happy. I think that we should be screaming from the rafters, but but evidently even the research people are feeling these handcuffs. And well, I know yes. you talk to corporate yeah. about it. So tell well, me I can more. tell you, I can tell you, you know, Manford, uh, after he, I first met Manford at a European scientific conference where he had done a bootleg study on Juice Plus. And I was the next speaker. And one of the things I said was, we got to have these people stop doing these bootleg studies <laughs> because he didn't use a placebo. So we, we laughed about that. And he went to see, came to the United States, to Nashville, to see Goldfarb's presentation on uh, Juice Plus effect in terms of exercise science. And Manfred put a proposal together and did the Graz study. And we've become great friends. We've skied together in Austria. He's come to Aspen here to ski with me. Uh, and uh, so we're in communication and I can tell you he is very frustrated and it's even more frustrating in Europe you guys probably don't know this but the European Food Safety Authority EFSA which is like the FDA and the FTC over there they won't let us talk about our studies because they want to know they're so stuck in the drug model they want to know what is the specific active ingredient that created these results. And the point is, it's everything. That's the whole point. And so we're working on ways to get around EFSA. And one of them is the Juice Plus Science Institute, which Manford has gotten approval to put together. 
And if the Science Institute puts together all this research on fruits and vegetables, including research on Juice Plus, then our people can reference the Science Institute for these findings, because Manfred himself is very frustrated. And in Australia, the most we can say is we have 20 studies. Who made that up? You know, come on. So again, the Juice Plus Science Institute is a way for the distributors in Australia and New Zealand to get around that. So I'm, I'm working behind the scenes with our folks to kind of, you know, push back on the regulators, which, you know, I, I did with John Weiss for years. They would always, our lawyers and our consultants are always going to give us the advice to keep us totally out of any risk. Well, I'm sorry. It's a business. You have to take some risk. And so for years, John and I would push back on the, our own advisors and lawyers and say, wait a minute, what about if we do this or that? Well, that's probably just a minor. Good, we're going to do that. And so, I, you know, what we need is to get back to that attitude.